Okay, so I have this boiler right here. It's cold, goes to apartment five, I believe. We have a call for heat, and uh, we're getting power going into this control, but no power coming out. So, got a residual one out right here, which should work, and I'm gonna try to swap it out and see what happens. Okay, so it is Tuesday. I uh, just finished my first two jobs. Uh, one was a tune-up, one was a uh, no heat, no hot water. Both pilots were out, but I'm on my way now to a rooftop unit or two rooftop units. It, I, it just says two offices don't have heat. Uh, I don't think I've ever been there, so I'm not sure what it's gonna be for. But uh, hopefully I get some good footage. Uh, it's starting to get cold out. It's only it's 46 now, so it's not that bad. But it was like 33 this morning, so hopefully I can get them heat. Okay, so I'm on the roof. You can see I got my tools out. Um, 120 volts going to the inducer, but the inducer's not turning on. Um, we already quoted this customer for the repairs, so it's just going to be all the same thing again. But uh, one thing I didn't check when I was here was the heat exchanger. So I want to see if I can check that. But uh, that's gonna be a little bit tough to do because the ductwork's going right in on the other side. Um, see what I can do is I can stick my little inspection camera down the tubes, see if I find any holes. Uh, that's probably going to be the e easiest thing to do, but um, you could see, I mean, look at the inducer fan assembly, it's all rusted. Uh, this control board, it's just, like, failed. Um, and there's another control board on the other side, but I'm going to start on. And just, just to show you this inducer motor, I have my, uh, just moving that manually, and, you know, you can hear the motor trying to move it, but it won't move, so just pulling uh, power right off the control board. That way, you know, it doesn't catch fire or something crazy like that. I ended up not really recording that much because uh, we already had di diagnosed the issue uh, and they need to get the repairs, repairs approved of. I'm on my way now to an apartment building that we service with multiple boilers, but each apartment has its own boiler, and two of them supposedly have issues. So I'm gonna take a look at them, and I also have to take a look at his doorbell, which I know nothing about doorbells, but we'll see, maybe I'll be able to fix that too. Okay, I am down in the basement now, uh, going to the boiler room. I just checked one of the apartments. They do, in fact, have heat. All the radiators are warm. But let's take a look at the boilers, see if there's anything wrong, anything obvious with any of them. Like pilot lights, this is electronic ignition, so that one's not going to have a pilot. This one's running, that one's also running. Let's pull the cover off this one. No, I think there's a light switch in here that I can turn on. Yeah, not great, but it's light. This one is running. Show you, uh, or no, it's just the pilot light. So the pilot's lit. Uh, where's our TT? See if I jump it out, if we uh, turn on. Oh, my TT's right over there, great. Went back here for nothing. It's odd that the TT's on a different boiler. Nothing is happening. 
Okay. Let's see what our Aquastat looks like. All the power is on. Oh wait, I didn't even bother to check temperature. Yeah, it's at it's up at temperature. That's why it's not running. And we're at I don't know if you could see it. Yeah, you can't see it. Like 170 degrees. And it's kicking on as we speak. Okay, let's see what all the other temperatures are at. We got 170 ish on that boiler over there. What do we got here? Here we got. We're cold. But. I thought this one was just on. Hold on. No, this one's not on. Take a look at our thermostat. We are pulled out. I gotta take a closer look at this one. Okay, so I have this boiler right here. It's cold, goes to apartment five, I believe. We have a call for heat, and uh, we got power going into this control, but no power coming out. So, got a residual one out right here, which should work, and I'm gonna try to swap it out and see what happens. Okay, so I just got the new one in, and you can see how it's mounted. It's mounted the opposite direction that the existing one was, because in the manual it clearly states that it has to go in that position. This is incorrect. So, all my terminals are facing down. Um, the only difference between this and this one is that the 24 volts has to go into THW, uh, where it went into just 24 volts here. The 24 volt on this control is only for the vent damper, for power for the vent damper, which was confusing me, but. Now we turn power on and see what happens. I can already hear it beep. Okay. We're in ignition. And it sounds like the gas valve opened and we lit. So we are now heating. And I'll monitor this to make sure that it shuts off properly at temperature. And that if the call for heat stops, then it also shuts off. But it looks like we're gonna be good to go. And one thing I did just to make sure that it's wired correctly was I disconnected these wire nuts, which they go down into that boiler, to make sure that it turns off when the call for heat stops, and it did. Uh, but I only did that for a few seconds, turned it back on, because I want to watch it get the temperature and make sure it shuts off properly. And one thing I always do, especially when I'm in a little boiler room like this with all these boilers, is having a carbon monoxide detector on and it beeps at me if it's unsafe I can see the levels but just so I don't walk into a building one day and not walk out uh, I know a lot of people complain that they have issues with this one it has worked amazingly for me every time that I've used it uh, it has shown carbon monoxide when there is cur when there's definitely carbon monoxide and when there's not it shows that there's not um, it also tells you if it needs to be recalibrated uh, by the factory, which um, I think actually might be what this gear icon means. Let me check that. That's not good. Let's see. It should have the manual here. somewhere it tells you what everything is. Let me look through it. Okay, thankfully that's just the shutdown timer icon. See, both my fingers are pointing to that symbol. That's what we have on here. So it's gonna shut down after they go away. We saved battery on it, uh, but 
Some people might not want that. I know I could turn it off, but I'd rather save the battery. It'll beep at you before it turns off, so it could always run out. But yeah, so far we're heating nicely up to 150-ish degrees, 45. But uh, it's a very long run because it goes all the way up to the fifth floor and it is half inch copper, so probably gonna take a while for the boiler to hit temperature since it's pulling so slowly pulling in the cold water. Well, we're still running without any issues, so we should, in theory, be all good here. Okay, so we're approaching 190, uh, closer to 180, so it should be shutting off any minute. I did just replace a thermostat for a, one of the tenants upstairs that was having issues with it, but I was hoping I'd be able to catch the temperature shut off on camera. Let's see if I... Just lower that temperature. Did I just raise it? No, that's the lowest it goes. 180. Well, that's what it's locked into. But that 180 we turned off. Let's bring it back up. Make sure it turns on. Yep. So I'm going to set that back to that 180 it needs to be at, and let it be. We're all set. Okay, so that's it. Pretty simple uh, calls today, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed watching. Uh, comment any advice, criticisms, or feedback, and like the video, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.